Hi, my name is Rupert G from the Hello Deli, and you're watching Total TV. Hey, Michael here. Up next, an all-new episode of On the Air. As always, real stories told by real people. This week, we're talking about girls and guys and stuff. Hi, I'm Tommy. Hi, I'm Melissa. You can't figure guys out. And if you're a guy, who can figure them out? Well, you've come to the right place. We've got a lot to talk about. <laughs> what a downer. Sorry. <laughs> we know guys and girls are different, but tell us what you think about each other. Come on, what you really think. They're just different completely. I think every guy's a pervert. Yeah. yeah. You have more girls gossiping and starting rumors about each other. They'll burp and act like it's cool. I think that a lot of guys use girls to get sex. Girls like to assume a lot about guys. <laughs> a lot of guys tend to just go for the looks. They just want to, what's on the outside? That's what they're looking at, I believe. They want to be in a group all the time. I mean, go to the bathroom, you see like a pot of five of them just like move in all at once. <laughs> girls tend to whine and complain a little more. Some of the biggest <laughs> whiners I know are boys. They can be so sweet and so nice when you're alone with them, but then once they get in a big group of friends, they're just like, hi. Okay. Either they're either talking about cars or athletics. They don't have any other subject besides that. Girls take a long time to do things, like to get dressed or something. When it's time to go to be somewhere at like 7, they be ready by 8. Girls are more worried about, you know, the makeup and the hair. And you guys have a brush? Because our guys at her school, I mean, their hair is totally messed up. <laughs> they don't care how they look. Some guys have to make a decision. Usually, they're a lot more decisive than girls are. One day they want something, the next day they don't. They can't make up their mind. What bugs me the most is the girls always have to be right. It's hard to read guys and know what they're thinking. You never know what girls are thinking. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> they, and they want you to know what's going on. No. And, yeah, and they, they expect don't. You to... Girls are smarter than guys. Everybody knows <laughs> that. <laughs> no. Yeah. God. Why? God. Er. God. Wise. Er. Well, there's no doubt about it. Guys and girls are different. And you are really different. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Anyways, sometimes those differences are really obvious when you hang around someone. Like in dating. Listen to Jeff and Melissa. We met on a blind date, and I couldn't stand him. And he just seemed like a very impersonal kind of guy. It takes me a while to open up. That's just the way I am. I socialize. She socializes. Really a lot into socializing and being with people. It kind of scares you. If, if you're a shy person, it kind of scares you when a person comes up to you and gives you a hug when they don't even know you. I'm a huggy so, person. Jeff says these things sometimes, and he doesn't think about what he's saying before he says them, and it really hurts my feelings. I'll say something, and she'll think I mean mean something in a in a different way than I actually mean it. I can't stand it when he when I ask him a question, and I I'm, I'm, I want to talk to him. I I want to get in depth conversation. I don't know. Well, what do you want to do? I don't know. She'll get mad at me. I'll say, what's wrong? You hurt me or something. Uh, you said that the wrong way or you used the wrong tone of voice. He doesn't understand because I'm a girl and he doesn't understand. Sometimes guys do not say what they feel. Guys are not one of those people who will just up and cry or up and say, I feel this way, I feel this way. He's so sports oriented and I'm more like, well, you know, all the girl stuff. Clothes, friends, shopping. I couldn't just talk to him like he was my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, but see, I, I never really get a chance to talk because you see how she's talking right now. She's nonstop all the time. 
A recent poll revealed that guys use deodorant 6.5 times a week and girls 7.4 times a week. So one day out of the week, you guys stink. Ladies, let's just start with you first. When, when let's say Thumper, Thumper jumps out in front of a road, you're driving along. Here's kind of what you do. Here he goes. Oh, I couldn't possibly run over him. I think I just have to hit the oak tree instead. <laughs> well, but a guy, you get him behind the wheel of a car and you get an armadillo and a couple of cats out there, he's a happy camper. <laughs> I got all three of them, baby, did you see that? You know why we're trying to figure each other out? It's the dating thing. Well, I think we can do the friend thing, but you know, a lot changes when you go into the dating thing. And check out DeAsia's story. When I want to date a guy, I want it to be the same. I don't want dating to interfere with our friendship because I think friendship is more important. As a friend, he may, you know, listen to my thoughts. I listen to him. And then when it comes to dating, it, it can change. It seems to me that he's not as open. Communication doesn't work out right. And um, you just, he's not his self. You're not yourself when you're dating. I don't understand why guys have to act like different in front of their friends or do things that he'd never done before you were dating. The guy I was a friend with, he, um, he was my friend for a while and then we tried to date and he would uh, make comments about going home with me. And he's like, yeah, I'm going home with her. You know, that little sexual thing, which isn't necessary because I'm not the type of person who does that. And he knew, he knew that. I don't want him to change. I want him to just be as we were as friends. So, you want to impress a girl. So what do you say? Do you know CPR? Because you're taking my breath away. Yeah. Your name must be Visa, because you're everywhere I want to be. <laughs> oh, good great. If we were at McDonald's, you'd be McGorgeous. <laughs> Don't feel like you got to be a lounge lizard. Here's a radical idea. Try just being brains, OK? Can all that lovey-dovey stuff and just be yourself. Is it hot in here? Or is it just you? That's a nice hat. Now it's time to stop and discuss what we've heard. First, what are the biggest differences between guys and girls? And second, what do you think is the biggest misconception about your gender? Talk about this. And remember, no raised voices. And when you're done, come on back and we'll finish the show. to you by Lackluster Video. Come on, make it a lackluster night. From somewhere deep in your worst nightmare comes the most terrifying film of the year. It's still following us. Where is it? I don't know, but it's getting closer. What is it? I'm picking up some serious emotional activity. It's all over the board. I can't get a good reading. Is it dangerous? I don't know, but my gut says yes. Circle dot dot, have you got your cootie shot? Uh, grow up. Hi, I'm on a small plane here with these guys from Mission Aviation Fellowship. I'm flying from Nairobi, Kenya to Dodoma, Tanzania. Down in Tanzania, I'm going to be working with some African youth for one week. My experiences on the mission field really opened my eyes. God is truly working in the lives of those African youth. And we had a lot of fun, just like a camp back in the States. And most of all, this trip encouraged me to consider a career in mission work. 
And that's how I spent my summer vacation. Welcome back. We're talking about the differences between girls and guys. That could take us a week. And that's why it's time to hear from our expert, Neil McClendon. You know, he's someone that always has some good words of wisdom. Help us out, Neil. Guys and girls are different. Duh. You see, you've known that since you were five, but the differences are far more than physical. Guys and girls think differently, feel different feelings, and act in different ways. Plus, girls have cooties. I saw it in the movie. See, we forget we're different, so we get frustrated. But what if you could crack the code? Well, that could revolutionize your relationships. But first, we've got to set some ground rules. Okay, first, guys aren't better than girls. Girls aren't better than guys, okay? Just there. Second, we're talking big picture here, okay? You got that? There are always exceptions to the rule. Third, we're building relationships, not just getting a date here, okay? And hey, we know it's politically incorrect to talk about these differences between males and females, but recently there's been a lot of scientific research to back this up. So, first of all, it's in our brains. Our brains. Our brains have two hemispheres, right and left. The right brain controls the more emotional, artistic aspects of life. The left brain is more structured, mathematical, and verbal. Scientists have been finding that females tend to have more connecting fibers between the two sides of the brain. Guys don't have as many. So, well, have you ever noticed that girls tend to get emotional about all sorts of things, and guys, we don't. I mean, again, there are exceptions. For girls, though, everything is connected to their emotions. It's literally the way their brains are wired. Guys don't have as many connecting wires, and so they tend to box up their emotions in a separate place. Who cares if an asteroid's about to destroy the world? I got a basketball game to play. It's not that guys don't have emotions. It's just not as easy to talk about them. They'd rather go punch something. That brings us to a second biological difference. Hormones. That's right. Hormones. You see, guys and girls have different hormones racing through their bodies. They're told that these hormones make you want to have sex all the time. But that's not all they do. The male hormone, testosterone, has also been linked with aggressive, competitive behavior. Why do you think guys hate to lose anything, okay? A third area of difference is not biological at all, but cultural. You see, we learn what it means to be male and female from the people around us. It used to be that little girls automatically got little dolls to play with, and boys, well, they got toy guns. But that doesn't happen so much anymore. But many other differences are taught to us as we grow up. TV and music, schools, churches, and families all give us images that we tend to follow. Now, these gender differences are no surprise to God. You see, Genesis 1:27 says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him Male and female, he created them. There's something about our male and female differences that represent the very image of God. Maybe it's the way we work together as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit do. In any case, when he had finished his creation, God looked at all that he had made and said, whoa, this is very cool. So being female or being male is a gift from God. How can we accept that, use it, and give it back to him? Stay tuned. Well, I had a crush on him for a really long time. We started like sitting together and I finally got up enough nerve to ask her out. It kind of took us a while to get to know each other. <laughs> we spend like three hours on the phone every night. Hello? Hey, Jay, how you doing? Hi. We communicate oh, differently. Like when we're talking, I just listen to her. He just sits there and he's quiet. I'm more of a listening person. I don't ever know if he's something's wrong with him because he just sits there and acts normal. I think that kind of annoys her. I always want to know how he feels. At first, he'd like always pick me up like 45 minutes early to wherever we were going. That's another thing about me. I'm always early. And I'm always like either 5, 10, 15 minutes late. She takes a while to get ready. We're like always late now. He's always real comfortable looking, and I'm not. I have all sorts of clothes, and I love to shop. 
She likes to shop. I'd go with her, but I don't really like to walk around a lot. You know how all the guys like sag and stuff? The other day, I told him, you know, pull up your pants. If you want to see the difference between guys and girls, check out their rooms. Most girls' bedrooms look a lot alike, okay? They've all got that bulletin board with buttons and ribbons pinned to it. They got notes their girlfriends wrote last year, okay? The reason your room is that way is because the theme of a girl's room is relationships. A guy's room, totally different. You won't see a guy with those pictures on his bulletin board. Uh-uh. He has a picture of the girl he's dating at that moment in a frame somewhere only because his girlfriend bought the frame, okay? Anyway, instead of pictures and notes, they've got baseball caps hanging on everything and maybe a, a few trophies from Little League. Why? Because the theme of a guy's room is accomplishments. Remember, we're talking generalizations here, okay? And in general, guys put the highest value on their accomplishments, while girls, girls prize relationships. And this affects all sorts of the things, but especially our communication. See, girls and guys communicate differently. And it's not so much that girls talk more than guys, it's just that they have different reasons for talking. Listen to this. Guys are usually more like general in that, and girls really like go deep. Girls tell their problems, guys keep it to themselves. We like to express our feelings more than guys do, and we're more open. Like if I need someone to talk to, I'll go to a girl because they can relate to me more, and guys don't usually want to listen. If I have a problem and I want to talk about it and just kind of kind of mellow and just talk about how I feel and everything, I'll go to a girl. If I want a solution, I will go to a guy because they just want to get everything finished, no more problems, everything's done. See? I mean, these girls were talking, the guys didn't, don't, won't, whatever. See, guys use their words to exchange information just enough to get the job done. And girls, well, girls use their words to share feelings that draw them closer to others. So what can we do about that? First, just by knowing the way it is, we can avoid some serious misunderstandings. Instead of thinking that he doesn't care or she's too nosy, you can just say, it's a guy thing or it's a girl thing. Second, maybe you can start to learn each other's language. Guys, learn to say, I understand how you feel. You don't need to fix things, just listen. Girls, I know it may seem as if a guy's language is full of meaningless statistics, okay? But try to express support for the guys you know. In Romans 12, 10, it says, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. And that word really refers to brothers and sisters, exactly what we're talking about here. Honor one another above yourselves. And then down in verse 15, it adds, rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. Now this is something guys especially need to work on, connecting emotionally with others. Live in harmony with one another. We're not exactly the same, but it's like harmony. Two different notes that sound great together. Hey guys and girls, here's a Bible story maybe you haven't heard before. In his letter to the Galatians, Paul's hotter than a couple on the Jerry Springer show. And why not? The church in Galatia had copped an attitude. There are Christians. And then there are super Christians. You know what I mean? Whatever. You see, faith in Christ is fine. But if you do these rules also, then you're part of the real team. With that kind of sorry attitude, the church are looking down on those who were different. Sorry, sister, you're not allowed. So you see, Paul's letter rebukes that idea and insists that Jesus Christ came to tear down walls between people and not build them up. Check it out. Neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, we're all the same. We're different, but equal. Before we leave this subject, I want to talk about dating relationships. You see, guys and girls conduct dating relationships differently. And if you don't understand that, you can make some big mistakes. First of all, guys tend to be more visually oriented than girls, which means that they tend to focus on looks. I mean, you know this already, I'm sure. And it's true that girls like good looking guys too. I think of the verse where God told the prophet Samuel, people look on the outward appearance, but God, God looks on the heart. 
You see, we all need to look more at the hearts of people around us, okay? Second, be very careful about the way you use touch in a relationship. Often a girl will grab a guy's hand or, or hug him to say hello, and she may not mean anything by it except, hey, you're my friend, I'm glad to see you. But of course, most guys, they got the testosterone factory working overtime, and a girl touches them and they start thinking one thing, sex. So avoid misunderstandings. Third, sometimes guys need space in a relationship. One writer talks about how the male need, has a need to go off into a cave and kind of sort things out. They can't process all their emotions out in public, okay? Girls, on the other hand, love to process emotions in public. So when a guy pulls away from a girl saying, I need some time to think about this relationship, she feels rejected. But it's not rejection. He really does need some time to work out his feelings on his own. The last issue is something I call winning and losing. You see, guys and girls enter the relationship for different reasons. As we said, guys are into accomplishments, and often a guy will see a girl as a trophy. He works to win her affection, and when he does, he's proud of that accomplishment until he sees someone else he might want to win. A true relationship involves give and take, caring and communication. Now, girls often lose themselves in the guy they love. I mean, they're so much in love that they give themselves completely to a guy. And sometimes, girls get sexually involved because the guy demands it, totally ignoring God's demand for holy relationships. You see, this lost identity can also mean that you lose sight of your own goals or you drop your other friendships and activities, and all because your life is revolving around this one guy. In biblical terms, that's idol worship. Always a bad idea, okay? When I think of relationships, I go back to the simple instructions in Ephesians 5.21. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. You're not using the other person as a trophy or making the other person your master. Christ needs to be at the center of all our relationships. As you learn to understand the differences between the sexes, accept them and work with them you'll have better friendships and better dating relationships. I think what Neil said really helped me to understand you. What's that supposed to mean? Well, he said that girls lose themselves in relationships. <laughs> I think I can see that. <laughs> Plus, your room's messy. I don't think so. First of all, he was talking about the dating thing. You know, don't get lost in dating. And second of all, we aren't the dating thing, we're the friend thing, Tommy. <laughs> and I don't even know about that anymore. Really? Just the friend thing? <laughs> yeah. And what do you mean my room is messy? You've never even seen my room. No. See ya. <laughs> so is your room messy? Well... See ya. I was right about something. It's time to wrap things up here on the Total TV Network. Do you want Neil McLennan in person at your church or youth camp? Just call 1-888-TOTAL-TV. See ya.